All right, let's have a look at practice question set number eight, starting with number one. It says, a positively charged object is brought near to but does not touch one end of a neutral metal rod on an insulated stand. So picture this. In fact, probably draw a picture of it, right? Best way to picture something is to draw a picture of it. We have a positively charged object. Doesn't matter what the shape of it is. We've talked about that before, right? The shape of it or the size of it is irrelevant. It's brought near to but does not touch a neutral metal rod. So this could be... We're drawing it as a metal rod here, but we could just as easily, as we have in class already, draw it as a circle. It doesn't make any difference. It's neutral, equal number of positives and negatives. It's on an insulated stand, which just means that it's not touching the ground, so we don't have to worry about anything with grounding. That is, until we see that it says the opposite end of the metal rod is grounded. So draw this. Now, I've drawn it the way that it's stated in the question, but does it really matter where the, the uh, grounding wire is? Not at all. It could be on the same side and we get the exact same effect. But we'll draw it as they, as they write it in the question. It says the ground is removed and the positively charged rod is then removed. Um, what's going to happen here? Forget about the question. What's going to happen? Well, the protons are going to what? Justin, the protons are going to? Leave. No. No, I'd say the same. Exactly. The They're going to stay leave. exactly where they are. Protons are going to stay exactly where they are. But the electrons will do what? Go to the ground. No. The electrons are going to go towards the positive. So they're going to go, they're going to go the other way. The couple electrons that were there are going to get pulled over to the right hand side and then the electrons on the ground are going to get pulled over here as well. That leaves it as a negative charge. I'm going to cut the ground wire as they told me to do. And then what happens? Well, it's left with a, a net negative charge. Justin, when the pressure's on, pressure's not on, um, then I know you're going to nail that question, right? Uh, all right, so what do we got here? As the result of the procedure described above, the metal rod will become uh, negative. It becomes negative, and it becomes negative as a result of gaining electrons from the ground. Okay, uh, let's take a look at number two here. Um, this one, I didn't really like the wording of this one. I, I didn't think it was a, a, a particularly well-written question, but um, we'll go through it anyways here. Um, when I put this on there, uh, and, and uploaded it just a few minutes ago for you. I, I, I had forgotten uh, earlier when I had uh, made this last semester, I had forgotten that, uh, that this question was on there. I should have checked, but I just forgot. Uh, it's okay, but it's not the greatest question in the world. It says, two identically charged electroscopes are shown below. Do you guys know what an electroscope is? Yeah. Remember? What does it do? Yeah, the thing that I broke, exactly. One of the things that I broke. I broke a lot of things over the years, but that's the last thing that I broke, yeah? It detects a charge. It detects charge. Okay, it detects charge. It doesn't tell us what kind of charge we have, positive or negative, but it does tell us whether we have charge present or not. Okay, it says a student touches electroscope one with a neutral metal rod, uh, electroscope two with a neutral glass rod. What's the fundamental difference here? Yep. Glass Good. We've got metal, we've got a glass, glass is an insulator, metal is a conductor. So uh, this answer, the difference, is probably going to have something to do with the difference between a conductor and an insulator, right? So let's flip over to what the question actually says. Which of the following diagrams best describes or best shows the leaves of the electroscope after the electroscopes are touched with the rods? Well, if we touch the electroscope with a metal rod, with a neutral metal rod versus a neutral glass rod, we know the glass rod is not going to cause conduction, or at least not a lot of conduction, right? We might get some electrons transferring, but for the most part, the glass is not going to take on the charge of the metal, right? Which means that what's going to happen to the leaves over here? They're going to stay where they are, right? There's no reason really for those leaves to change because this glass hasn't caused the electrons to move either from the uh, electroscope to the glass or from the glass to the electroscope. It pretty much stays where it was. But what about this metal? Well, at one level we could say this metal will allow these charges to try to balance out. So if this electroscope was negative 10, let's say, then it's going to become, or at least it's going to try to become, neg 5 and neg 5. Um, they probably wouldn't balance out exactly, but should both become negative, right? The problem with that is that if they both became negative, the electroscope would become less negative than it was before, and these leaves would still repel each other, but not as much. We don't have an option for that. When you look at this, we don't have an option that shows the leaves um, still being repelled, but not as much. So we've got to reread this question. 
A student touches electroscope one with a neutral metal rod. I don't like the wording of this, but it is what it is. We have to assume here that the student, when the student is holding the metal rod, now that student is big enough, along with the metal rod, to effectively do what? To effectively be a ground. Not necessarily conducting electrons into the ground, but the student himself or herself is big enough to be the ground. And if that's the case, then these two leaves are going to come together because they're not going to be charged anymore. And that means that they're not going to repel each other if they're not charged. So the answer that they're looking for in this one is B. Two happens, two, uh, nothing happens to number two because we've got uh, an insulator touching it and it's just as if nothing touched it. And this happens to number one, the leaves come together because we've got a conductor that's that's attached to a person which acts as the ground, which either drains the electrons from this uh, electroscope or pumps the electrons into this electroscope. Bottom line is to make it neutral. All right, how many people said B for that one? Listen, I, I don't like it. That's good, by the way, but I, I don't like it. Um, like, I was kind of 50-50 on B, B, D. Well, not quite 50-50, because um, in the end, if, if I was going to go with D, it would be because I was ignoring the person, and I was just saying, oh, okay, the, the neutral metal rod tries to balance out the charge, so these leaves are still going to be spread apart. But the problem with that is that those leaves, although they would still be spread apart, wouldn't be spread apart as much. Right? We have certainty with this one. Okay? So I think the only thing that we can assume is, um, with the results that we see here, is that the person becomes part of the system and then the person provides the ground, okay? Uh, next question. Here we have a neutral ball and a positively charged ball, as you can see here. Neutral styrofoam ball that's covered with tinfoil. Can anybody suggest to me why, uh, why we say tinfoil, though, there? I will tell you that even if they don't say tinfoil, you're probably not going to change the way you answer this question. But to make it technically correct, it should be covered with something like tinfoil, to make it a conductor, right? That means charges can move around on it, transfer, whatever. Um, what happens to move towards a metal sphere? What happens to it? What does happen to it? Neutral and positive, it's going to attract, right? Neutral is attracted to positive. And then, of course, because it's attracted, it's going to touch. And then when it touches, what happens? They're going to repel. Alex, why are they going to repel? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The dome of that, or the ball, whatever that was, is positively charged. The neutral ball touches it. They're going to try to be balanced, right? They're probably not going to balance because of the different size here, but they're going to try. The bottom line is they're both going to end up as positives, positive by charging by conduction. The electrons would have went from the neutral ball to this one, making this thing positive. Maybe it was plus 10 and 0. Do they balance it to be 5 and 5? Maybe. It's more likely to be like 3 and 7. But they're both positive after they touch each other. That means they're going to repel each other because they're both positive. If that was negative right here instead of positive, then they would balance out or try to balance out to be negative and negative. They'd still repel each other. Okay, just like that demonstration we did with the static ball. Remember with the static ball and the little um, pop can tab? Right? Attracted until it touched or until charges arced or jumped. And then it repelled because they were like charges. Uh, and next question, uh, electrostatic spray nozzles. This is much like the, uh, the electrostatic painting example we gave you in class, actually. Um, not quite the same thing, but almost. We're spraying pesticide through here, this positively charged needle. What's going to happen to those, those droplets of pesticide as they touch this positively charged needle? these neutral droplets, Cameron, touching the positive needle. Yeah, they're going to become positive as well. By the way, they're charging by conduction or induction? Conduction, conduction because charges are transferring. Which way are charges transferring? If these were neutral and they become positive, are electrons going this way or are electrons going this way? The first way or the second way? The first way, right. If you become positive from neutral, then you must have lost electrons. 
All right, let's see what the question says. Uh, the droplets leave the nozzle with a positive charge caused by the movement of electrons in the droplets. It's not protons because those protons are held in place by the strong force, and that's, uh, that's just too strong for the protons to leave, right? Whereas the, the electrostatic force that holds the electrons uh, in orbit around isn't nearly as strong at that distance, that is. And finally, the charged droplets are kept from being blown off the leaves by the wind because the charged droplets, what? Yeah, the whole point of this, right, is the same as the point of the paint being charged. The paint was attracted to the, to the fence, right? What do we want to do here? Well, we want to attract the pesticide to the, to the leaves. Well, how does it attract? How does the charged pesticide droplet attract to the neutral leaves? it induces a temporary separation of charge. Okay, or the side that's closest, the pesticide, would become opposite. Okay, and then, therefore, um, it would be attracted. Charged objects attract neutral objects because of that separation of charge. All right? How many people got five out of five? Good. Good.